I've been saying to the media, I've known for a long time Robert before, but I had not decided well not to share it with the public. But I want the public to know that I'm voting for Joe Biden. South Carolina should be voting for Joe Biden. Joe Biden and I used to spend a lot of time doing TV stuff together. We got to know each other. I know Joe. We know Joe. But most importantly, Joe knows us. That's right. That's right. That's important. Jim Clyburn is a political prostitute. This man is a political prostitute. He just told you that he's voting for Joe Biden. He supports Joe Biden. And he said that he knows Joe Biden. And Joe Biden knows him. Well, let me introduce you to Joe Biden. Let me explain the, this so-called Joe Biden to you. Let's go so you can understand who Joe Biden is and so you can also see why it's a problem for this old fool to support Joe Biden. Darius Perkins was released from prison in early July, having served 23 years of a 35-year mandatory minimum sentence for selling crack cocaine. In 2018, a new law retroactively reduced such long sentences for crack cocaine offences. I ain't going to try to play no victim, but... 35 years was, I think, was, was harsh. The U.S. has the highest prison population in the world. Incarceration exploded in the 80s with the beginning of the so-called war on drugs. And because black communities are intensively targeted by law enforcement, it was African Americans who were arrested and jailed disproportionately, even though white drug use was equal or more than that of blacks. Joe Biden took credit for the 1986 law that mandated the same sentence for five grams of crack possession as 500 grams of cocaine. And he followed that with the 1994 crime bill, which mandated federal mandatory life sentences for repeat drug offenses and encouraged U.S. states to do the same. The devastation of African-American communities through the drugs crackdown was apparent, yet it rejected recommendations to end the sentencing disparity for crack and ignored calls to focus more on crime prevention than punishment. We do everything but hang people for jaywalking in this bill. Mandatory minimum sentences passed during Joe Biden's tenure increased the federal prison population by about 800 percent. And there's a pretty direct correlation between mandatory minimum sentences and federal prison growth. I think the causal link is pretty clear and undeniable. In fairness to Biden, he wasn't alone in advocating harsh sentencing, and it was electorally popular. But the issue has become controversial in 2019 because he campaigned on his crime legislation until relatively recently, despite the obvious social devastation. And his recent apologies have been filled with qualifications. And he said, we're talking about things that happened a long time ago. Barack Obama trusted me. That should be enough of a reference. No, it ain't enough. Darius is now 46 and adjusting to a world that's changed since he was jailed at 23. But while billions of dollars have been spent on prisons and police due to Biden's legislation, the lack of opportunity in his hometown remains vivid. If anything, things got worse, we don't even have a, a store. Yeah, this would be the center of our town. Nobody wants to wake up in the morning and say, I want to deal drugs or break the law, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, we want opportunities. We want to be, able to be you know, middle class. We want to own a home. You know what I'm saying? Be able to put our children in college. We want to do the things that everybody else in society has. And still, thousands remain in prison, sentenced to life without parole for nonviolent offenses under legislation Joe Biden wrote and for which he passionately took credit. Shia Britansi, Al Jazeera, Sandy Level, Virginia. We must take back the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents, it doesn't matter whether or not they were deprived as a youth. It doesn't matter or not whether or not they had no 
background that enable them to have to uh, become a, a social uh, become socialized into the fabric of society it doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society the end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe shoot my sister beat up my wife take on my sons so I don't want to ask what made them do this they must be taken off the street that's number one there's a consensus on that unless we do something about that cadre of young people tens of thousands of them born out of wedlock without parents without supervision without any structure without any conscience developing because they literally I yield myself three more minutes because they literally have not been socialized they literally have not had an opportunity we should focus on them now if we don't they will or a portion of them will become the predators 15 years from now and madam president we have predators on our streets that society has in fact in part because of its neglect created again it does not mean because we created them that we somehow forgive them or do not take them out of society to protect my family and yours from them they are beyond the pale many of those people beyond the pale and it's a sad commentary on society we have no choice but to take them out of society and the truth is we don't very well know how to rehabilitate them at that point that's the sad truth I'm the guy that said rehabilitation when it occurs we don't understand it and notice it and when we even when we notice it and we know it occurs we don't know why so you cannot make rehabilitation a condition for release that's why in our system there's the federal system you serve 85 percent of your time it's a shame but we don't know how to rehabilitate but there is a consensus and I will cease a we must make the streets safer I don't care why someone is a malefactor in society I don't care why someone is antisocial I don't care why they become a sociopath we have an obligation to cordon them off from the rest of society try to help them try to change the behavior that's why we do in this bill we have drug treatment and we have other treatments to try to deal with it but they are in jail away from my mother your husband our families but we would be being we would be absolutely stupid as a society if we didn't recognize the condition that nurtured those folks still exist and we must deal with that you heard how joe biden was speaking no different than someone that has a make america great again hat he's no different how is this guy is going to be the president but yet he has this track record because he's the author of the 1994 crime bill that decimated black families. On the strength of that alone, I could not vote for him because he created that crime bill and he didn't care what happened to black families. So if he don't care about having to our families and how it decimated, how it created a major problem in our community, then we should not vote for him at all. I can't vote for him. And many of you should not vote for him whatsoever. And Clyburn joins me now. Congressman, this was among the worst kept secrets in Washington. Um, uh, let me ask you this. How much more pressure is on Biden now to win South Carolina? There's really no excuse, correct? Well, there's a lot of pressure on Biden, but there's even more pressure on Jim Clyburn, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough. Uh, but I think we can uh, win this. I feel very good about it. I've been talking to people uh, throughout South Carolina, uh, you know, all during the campaign season. Uh, and I really believe uh, that Joe will win. Uh, I'm trying to make sure that he gets a smashing victory. So now you see the reason why Jim Clyburn is a political prostitute. This man has no integrity. The, uh, what am I talking about? I don't expect him to have any integrity. He's a whore. Jim Clyburn is a whore. A political prostitute. That is what he is. Because how can you support Joe Biden? How can you support Joe Biden? 
how can you, a man that destroyed your own people, a man that destroyed your own people, how do you support Joe Biden? You support, you're supporting Joe Biden so that when he, in your mind, becomes the president, so that you can get some political office. That's why you support Joe Biden. You support Joe Biden because you want to get some political office here or there. That's why you support him. Not considering how much he hates you. Joe Biden hates you. You Jim, stupid, foolish Jim Clyburn. You are an old fool. You are an old foolish man. That will disregard a man that have destroyed your own people. You, di you disregard that because you are a political whore. You are a political prostitute. You j foolish Jim Clyburn. Wake up. See, this is what happens when you don't know who you are. This is what happens when you don't know who you are. Jim Clyburn doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know that he is a Hebrew. Jim Clyburn did not know that he is a Hebrew. Jim Clyburn is in America today, just like the Hebrews were in Egypt. Just like the Hebrews, the Israelites adopted the ways of the Egyptians and began to follow the Egyptian system and thought that they were Egyptians. That was why when their God wanted them to come out of Egypt, Israelites did not want to leave Egypt because they now became one with Egypt. They didn't want to leave. They thought they were Egyptian. That's exactly the same situation with the so-called Negroes, the so-called African Americans. Today you say you are, you are an American, like this old fool, Jim Clyburn. He is so foolish, he has no idea who he is. He doesn't know that he is a Hebrew and he's supporting his enemy. He doesn't know that the Europeans are his enemies. He doesn't know that Joe Biden is his enemies. And being a whore, being a political prostitute, that's what happens when you, don't, when you lose your heritage. Just like he says in Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Jeremiah 17 verse 4, that the Hebrews will lose their heritage. They will lose their identity. They will be scattered in the four corners of the earth. And they will serve their enemies. They will follow the ways of their enemies. Today, the so-called African-Americans are following their enemies. They are following the political system of their enemies. They are voting for their enemies. God is the one that raised the Europeans against you and he told you that he will do this. Only if you would take some time and read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy 28, you will see for yourself. Only if you would take time and read Jeremiah 17 verse 4 that say that you will forget your heritage. You will discontinue from your heritage. You call yourself black. Is there a country called black? Can you go to the country of black? You call yourself African American. Is there a country called African American? This is what happens when you lose your heritage and you're following your enemy. This is what happens when your enemy have educated you. Your enemies have educated you. And today you're living in the land of your enemy. You stand up and support a man that hates you with deep-rooted hatred. A man that have destroyed the lives of your brothers. The lives of your brethren. The seed of Satan. Joe Biden. These are the seed of Satan. Jim Clyburn is their political prostitute. A foolish old Hebrew who doesn't know who he is. And will most likely not know who he is. Jim Clyburn will die not knowing his identity. Not knowing that he is a Hebrew. Jim Clyburn is going to spend the rest of his life not knowing that he is a Hebrew man living in the land of his enemies. Just like he says in Leviticus 26, read the whole chapter. Deuteronomy 28, read the whole chapter. Google and read Jubilees chapter 1 and you will see for yourself. Jubilees chapter 1, read it. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Today the Hebrews don't know who they are. They've lost their heritage. 
read Psalm 78. Google and read Psalm 78. I know you're not going to read all this. I know you will not read it. I know you're not going to you will not read all these places because you are you are lazy, you're psychologically lazy, you're mentally lazy, you're spiritually lazy. And you've allowed your enemies to educate you. The Europeans are your enemies and God is the one that raised the Europeans against you. Your God is the one that raised the Europeans against you and they've educated you. So you think you you will not understand what I'm saying. The Europeans are to you just like God raised the Philistines against your, your ancestors. God raised the Philistines against your ancestors. He, the, he raised the Babylonians against your ancestors. He raised the, 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 the Greeks against your ancestors. That's the same thing happening today. It's the same thing. Same way God has raised the Europeans against you and they kicked you out of your land in 70 AD. In 70 AD, the Hebrews, the Israelites, were driven out of their land in 70 AD. The historian Josephus actually witnessed the siege and aftermath and said, Now as soon as the army had no more people to slay or to plunder because there remained none to be the objects of their fury, Titus Caesar gave orders that they should now demolish the entire city and temple. Other than a few towers and forts for the Roman garrison, everything was destroyed. It was so thoroughly laid even with the ground by those that dug it up to the foundation that there was left nothing to make those that came thither believe Jerusalem had ever been inhabited. The Wars of the Jews, or History of the Destruction of Jerusalem, Book 7, Chapter 1. Then about 60 years later, the Roman Emperor Hadrian commenced with finishing the job of the complete Romanization of Jerusalem and much of the land of Israel. By 135 AD, nearly 600,000 Judeans were killed and over 1,000 towns and villages were razed to the ground. The practice of the Mosaic Law was prohibited, the sacred scrolls were burned, and circumcision was outlawed. After Hadrian, all that remained on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem were a few Roman statues. Many of them were slaughtered by the Roman Empire and the Hebrews migrated into Africa and settled in Western Africa. And then from there, in the 1600s, your enemy came back. Your enemies, the same enemies you have till today, they came back in the 1600s and took you as slaves and took you towards the Americas where you are today. And today, you don't know who you are. You call yourself black. I am black. African-American. Black. African-American. Black. Today, you don't know who you are. Like this old fool. The political prostitute, Jim Clyburn, who don't know that he is a Hebrew. You have to go back and begin to keep God's law. Wake up. You're not an American. You are not an American. Your ancestors who were taken to the Americas on slave ships, they would never be, be, be accept the label American. America, America is the land of your enemies. America, America is the land of your oppressor. America is the land of your enemies, the land of your oppressor. Your oppressor have, have raised you. Your oppressor have educated you. Your oppressor have taught you. So you don't know who you are. You foolishly call yourself black. You foolishly support your enemies like this old fool, pro political prostitute Jim Clyburn. Who don't know who he is you're voting for your enemy even though your god told you not to appoint a stranger to rule over you the europeans are not supposed to be you're not supposed to be voting for them you're not supposed to part participate in their phony political process you are not supposed to participate in their phony political theater they are phony political comedy they are all the same and their political system is a joke it's a joke. You have to be a political prostitute like Jim Clyburn to participate in their stupid, foolish, comedic political system. A fraud. These people are your enemies and your God sent you into, uh, your God have scattered you in the four corners of the earth because your ancestor refused to keep God's law. 
Today you've lost your heritage, like it says in Jeremiah 17, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 9, from verse 11 to 16. Jeremiah 9, 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 11 to 16. I'm repeating myself so you can go and read it. But I know you won't read it because you're lazy. You're psychologically lazy. You're mentally lazy. You're spiritually lazy. Because you've been educated by your oppressors, by your enemies that your God raised against you. Read, read Jeremiah chapter 9, 11 to 16. Jeremiah 9, 11 to 16 and you will see what it says. The reason why you're in the land of your enemies today because you refuse to keep God's law. Your ancestors refuse to keep God's law. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 13 makes it very clear. Psalm chapter 78 shows you how you got in trouble. All the things that happened in the past. Psalm 76 Psalm 78, the book of Psalms, chapter 78, Google it and read it. Your enemies have educated you. That's why you don't believe in the Bible. Because your enemy have taught you your book. The Bible is your book. The Bible doesn't belong to the Europeans. The Bible did not come from the Europeans. The Bible condemns the Europeans. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1 and 2 condemns them. Isaiah 14, verse 1 and 2 shows that in the future, they will be your slaves. They will be your slaves, just like they oppressed you. Isaiah 14 verse 1 and 2. They will never read that in your, in, your, in your satanic churches today. Jim Clyburn is a political prostitute. And if you're a so-called African-American, you are not an African-American. You are not black. Please stop describing yourself that way. That's, it sounds very foolish. Stop calling yourself black. You're not black. You're not African-American. You are a Hebrew Israelite. Wake up and stop voting for your enemies. Stop participating in their, in their political system. Stop voting for them and go back to the laws and the commandment of your God. Go back and keep the laws and the commandment of your God. You, mu you must start keeping the laws and the commandment of your God. Go and read the book of Exodus. Start by reading the book of Exodus. Read the book of Jubilees. Google it and read it. Go to Google and type in Jubilees chapter 1 and read it. Read the book of Jubilees and read the, read the whole book. It's on Google. It's for free. Download it. Download the PDF. Read the book of Jubilees so you can see your history. Read the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomies, the book of Numbers. These are historical books. I am not talking about religion. I am not talking about Christianity. I hate Christianity. Christianity came from our enemies. Christianity came from the Europeans. It was created by Constantine the Great, our enemies. Christianity is not our religion. We should not be following Christianity. And we should not throw the baby out with the bathwater. We should reject Christianity. We must reject, reject Christianity. Because Christianity, Christianity has been used against us. Christianity is a weapon of our enemies, the Europeans. And they've used it against us. We have to reject Christianity, but we have to embrace our book, the Holy Scriptures. That is our book. And we must go back and begin to keep all the laws and the commandment of our Heavenly Father. We must go back and begin to keep all the laws we see in the book of Exodus, the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Numbers, the book of Leviticus. We must go back and begin to keep these laws. You have to read Deuteronomy 28. Read Deuteronomy 28 to see what you're going through today. Read the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28. So you can see and understand the things that you are going through today. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Leviticus chapter 26. Jubilees chapter 1. Luke chapter 21. Read these places. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 11 to 16. Read this scripture so you can see the things you are going through. These things was prophesied. But we don't know these things anymore because you have been educated by your enemies. Proverbs 331. Proverbs 331. Envy not your oppressor and learn none of their ways. Stop following the European ways. These are your enemies and your God raised them against you to punish you. And we must not follow their way. We must follow the scriptures. We must follow the laws of God. We must follow the laws and the commandment of, of God. We must reject religion. We must reject religion. Re religion came from men. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about your nationality. I am talking about your nationality. You are a Hebrew. You are not black. Stop saying that. You're not African-American. Stop saying that. Your ancestors were not African-Americans. Your ancestors were not black. They were Hebrews. Just like when you speak Hebrew language, Hebrew culture, Hebrew land. Go and look into these things and stop following your oppressor. Proverbs 31. 
Envy not your oppressor and learn none of their ways. Envy not your oppressor and learn none of their ways. Proverbs 331. Stop following the European way. Stop following the ways of the white men. Follow the scriptures. Follow the laws of your God. You must go back and begin to keep the laws and commandments of your God. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. You are a Hebrew. You are not black. You are a Hebrew. You are not African American. You are a Hebrew Israelite. And you must go back and begin to keep the laws and commandments of your God. Thank you.